Now we will move forward to the last topic of this lecture, which is lateral gene transfer or horizontal gene transfer. When we look at the tree of life, as well as the trees that we are generating and inferring in phylogenetics, we would like these trees to represent evolutionary history. A tree, as you will recall, is a branching pattern where two branches never come back together to form one branch. But in some cases, the true history is not actually a tree. So there may be exceptions to the branching of trees that are inferred by phylogenetics. Sometimes there may actually be crossing over from one branch to another. For example, some plants combine the genomes of different parental species, resulting in a new species formed by hybridization. Of course, early in eukaryotic history, mitochondria and plastids originated from symbiosis, which injected new genetic material into the organism. All of these are examples of horizontal gene transfer that introduces new genetic material that connects branches of the tree of life rather than passing from parent to offspring. So that's our definition. Horizontal gene transfer is any means of transfer of genetic material other than the traditional means from parent to offspring, which we refer to as vertical. Horizontal gene transfer is also sometimes referred to as lateral gene transfer. For our purposes, these are the same thing. So how does it occur? Uh, there are a number of different mechanisms, some of which are listed here. For example, uh, bacteria may inject genetic material via its pillus to another bacteria and transfer genetic material. A virus may carry its payload and may carry other material along with its own genome. And if a cell leaks genetic information, for example, from membrane shock, then another bacteria may pick it up and incorporate it into its genome. So the, uh, the process of horizontal gene transfer via these mechanisms can lead to some interesting outcomes. And here I'm using, I'll be using a highlighter to describe some of the outcomes on the trees. We have two trees here, one at the top and one in the bottom. And in both cases, we can use the data set we have about the four species, A, B, C, and D, to infer a tree about them. However, in both cases, our tree might be inferred incorrectly. And where the true tree is what's shown in these kind of wider paths, and there are two mechanisms that are shown here by which the inferred tree may be inferred wrongly or differ from the underlying species tree. What I mean by wrongly here is that the genes may influence the formation of the inferred tree and then put some groups close to each other where the species are not and other groups far from each other where the species are close. In the top figure, this shows the effects of horizontal gene transfer. In this case, we have a simple series of speciation events, uh, but the gene under consideration is lost in the lineage leading to species C. So it's lost in this lineage. That orange line ends, and it ends when a lateral gene transfer introduces a branch uh, from species A. In this setting, we, if we look at the purple branches alone, they would appear to have diverged relatively recently. We would infer that species A was close to species B and that, say, species C and D were very far apart because in order to go from D to the common ancestor of C, well, D has to go down here, and the common ancestor of C goes on this circuitous path down to these ancient, uh, this, this ancient, uh, this speci ancient speciation. Uh, but horizontal gene transfer, which is the top, is not the only mechanism by which, by which such mistakes can be made. In the bottom figure, we show only vertical gene transfer, but actually we're going to make the exact same mistakes. So a key event in this is the gene duplication shown down here, which gives rise to these paralogs, and the paralogs are marked in purple and orange. Ultimately, however, in this case, only one copy of the gene that is duplicated is needed. And so in A and C, the orange uh, paralog is lost, and in B and D, the purple paralog is lost. And so if we look at the different colors, like C and D, we would have to go all the way back to this early duplication event, despite the fact that C and D 
are closely related as species. Whereas C and A, or B and D, would be more closely related uh, than, or excuse me, C and, uh, uh, yeah, C, yeah, C and A would be correct. D and B would be correct. That is, the gene tree would match the species tree because the same paralog is uh, existing in both A and C and in both B and D. So a real consequence is that the true tree of life, if you will, has these different branches that cross it, right? So we see some things like the big ones, like the mitochondria here and the origin of plastids here. But there are other events as well, shown here mostly in the archaea and the bacteria, though there's just one later one in the eukaryotes. Now, they're more rare in eukaryotes, and in particular more rare in multicellular eukaryotes. And that's because, well, a lot has to happen, right? We can consider five steps that really need to happen, uh, but if you consider these five steps, it's actually more difficult as you go through these steps, and it's less likely to complete a complete horizontal gene transfer in multicellular organisms. And why is that? Well, here's step one, is the preparation of the genetic material for transfer. So uh, that might be, in the case of, say, a membrane disruption, a leakage of genetic material out of an organism. Uh, the second is transfer between a donor and a recipient. So somehow there has to be some mechanism that involves the recipient organism taking up. So maybe it's the it's a bacteria taking up genetic material, or maybe it uses its pillus to inject genetic material into another organism. At any rate, the genetic material is transferred and is available in the recipient. The third is that it gets into the recipient, and honestly, I'm not sure why, uh, I can't remember why they made this distinction between steps two and three, because ultimately, step three is getting into the recipient organism. Step four is key because it has to have an ability to replicate. And maybe it replicates as a, as a plasmid or extra chromosomal, or maybe it actually gets into the chromosomes of the recipient and replicates with the recipient's host genome. But it's this last step, stable inheritance, is by far more difficult in a multicellular organism because most of the cells do not pass their genes on to a descendant. Most of the cells in a multicellular organism are somatic and only the germline cells, the ovaries and the sperm in the case of animals, have even the potential for inheritance from parents to offspring. And of course, only a very small fraction of those actually do. So even though horizontal gene transfer may occur partially, that is, it may occur between cells, it may not be inherited most of the time in multicellular organisms. So while it's not uncommon in bacteria and archaea, it is much less common in eukaryotes in multicellular eukaryotes in particular. Now, how often does it occur? Well, it occurs, that's for sure, and it's important, and it complicates the tree of life, especially early in the tree of life. If you go back here, notice there's a lot going on at this early part. But the actual extent to which horizontal gene transfer occurs in eukaryotes, and even in some cases in, in bacteria and archaea, uh, are it's fairly controversial. There are people who take fairly different views about this topic, and that's a real difference in interpretation of the scientific evidence according to current science. So it's not entirely clear. At any rate, that's where we're going to leave off. What we've learned in this whole thing, as well as the phylogenetic tree estimation earlier, is uh, we can use phylogenetic tree estimation to infer evolutionary history if we're working with a model that is entirely branching. Inferring correct trees is challenging in many cases, and it may be due to things like horizontal gene transfer, but it also may be uh, complicated by vertical gene transfer, such as the duplication and gene loss. Rooting a tree can be done by a bunch of different methods, such as using outgroups or a midpoint uh, method when a tree needs to be rooted. Another assumption uh, that can give us a root without one of those other tools is a, the assumption of a molecular clock, as is done in UPGMA. But a molecular clock assumption may be unjustified or downright wrong in a lot of practical cases, so it's not as commonly used as some of the other methods. 
So next time we're going to move into whole genome analysis and going deeper into genome browsers and we'll start looking at networks of genomic information and I am looking forward to that. Thank you. We'll see you then.